Hi everyone, welcome back to Style With Substance. Today's video is going to be all about how you can turn your house into a home. So making it feel like a place you can call your own, making it feel like somewhere that you can go to get away from the world. So if you've just moved into a new place, or you've just bought a new place, or you're renting, or you've just moved out of home and you're at uni, this is how you can make the place that you live feel like your home. If you like the sound of that, please keep watching. So I think that one of the most important things about making the place that you live feel like, not just a house, not just a flat, not just an apartment, not just a room, but feel like your home, is to put your own stamp on it. And when we move into somewhere, normally we are blessed with the fact that it is a completely blank canvas. If that is not the case, however, there are ways in which you can make it really feel like you've put your own mark on it and you've really made it your own. First one of those things is painting. Sounds really simple, but a lot of the time when you move into somewhere and the walls are a certain colour, I, for one, find it hard for it to feel like, yeah, this is the colour I would have picked. So even if you move in and it is a colour that you would have picked yourself, that's absolutely fine and in most cases great because we all know how expensive it can be to paint somewhere and you might not be able to paint the walls if you're renting, for example. But sometimes even just changing the colour of one wall or putting some wallpaper up or putting a poster up, something that tells you that yes, the walls were this colour when I moved in, but I've put my stamp on it in this way. Or I've painted the walls a different colour because that colour represents vibrance or tranquility or whatever. So I think painting can really help to really make the place feel like you had your own creative mark on it. Another thing that you can really change is the flooring or, or carpet or whatever is on the floor when you when you are when you move into this place. Now again, if you're renting or if you're a university student, it probably might not apply so much, but there are other things that you can do that I'll get onto in a moment. And I think for me personally, carpet really makes somewhere feel cozy. Not everywhere, obviously, you don't want carpet in the kitchen, bathrooms, toilets, whatever, those are the places where you don't want stains to be magnified everywhere. But in rooms like the living room, the bedrooms, the uh, landing, whatever it is, I feel like carpet really adds that extra bit of coziness. Now, we were lucky enough when we moved into our house that the rooms that we wanted to be carpeted were carpeted bar one. So we didn't have much to do there, but I suppose in terms of giving things a spruce up, you can always hire a carpet cleaner and kind of go over the carpet just to make, just to give it that brand new fresh look and feeling so you know that it's absolutely completely clean and it's fresh and you know any dirt that goes in it from then on is your own. If you're more of a laminate flooring type person or a tile type person you can change your tiles in the place. If you move in somewhere and, and they've tiled it really nicely obviously there's no need to do that and again if you're renting or if you're a student you're probably not at liberty to do such but what you do find is that there's a lot of vinyl. It's basically an artificial type of flooring that mimics the look of tiles or wooden laminate flooring that you can put down. Always check with your landlord if you are renting, but if you own a home and you can't afford to tile it or put in new wooden floorboards, look into vinyl. That's a, a really inexpensive way of creating the look of tiles or the look of wooden laminate flooring without the expense. Another way in which you can really start to build up your home, your new place, is furniture. Now it sounds very basic and it sounds very simple but actually when you think about it sometimes even having the basic bits of furniture in there don't quite make it feel really cosy. Adding extra pieces of furniture that are really unique to you as a couple could help. For example, things like a bookcase. You might not have loads of books, but you can put lots of little ornaments on the different shelves and really kind of make a visual piece of artwork that you can look at and think, yeah, I did that. Things like futons or little um, stools that you can put at the end of the sofa, just to really bring a bit more warmth into the room, somewhere you can put your feet up, and even one at the end of your bed, you know, where you can store all your cushions poser tables and poser chairs either in your bedroom or in the living room 
to really add an accent of colour that kind of complements whatever you've got on the main sofa but also provides more seating if you have lots of guests coming over but again adds more life into the room and makes it really start to fill up and feel like right there are people living here and they need these chairs just something to take up more space without crowding the room too much so for me the ultimate way to make a place feel like home is soft furnishings I am obsessed with soft furnishings at the moment and wherever I can find a Next or a Matalan or any home, any store with a home department, I am straight in there looking at what new cushions I can get. But cushions aren't the only things you can get, but they do really help to brighten up your average sofa or your average bed or your average chair. I tend to stick with accent cushions with bits of gold or bits of silver in them just because that kind of matches this sort of look and feel that I want to go with in the house. Then there's rugs. In the living room, I love a statement rug to really take away from the plainness of what the carpet might look like and just add a bit more life. And if you've got wooden or laminate flooring, a rug can really bring the warmth back into the room. And in the bedroom, again, it just adds more of a cosy feel and kind of, if it's nice and soft, you know, you put your feet on that when you get up in the morning, you just feel that little bit more relaxed and ready to start your day. Another thing I think is great is curtains. And that sounds really odd, but there are certain rooms in the house that we moved into that didn't have curtains. And there was something missing, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And then when I thought about it and I looked at loads of interior design magazines, I was like, it's curtains, that's clearly what's missing. So there's a lot of blind and stuff in the house at the moment, but curtains is the way, is a way that I'm using to really make the room feel a bit more closed off from the outside world, close off the light, add a bit more glamour, especially if they're like the nice long floor length curtains, and just really add a bit more style and a bit more homeliness to a room. So curtains is a really good way to do that. And if you've got windows in hallways and places like that, throw curtains in there too. There is no end or no restriction to where you should put your curtains. Put them wherever you want you know put them on your mirrors i don't know <laughs> but yeah curtains really good way to do that another really good way of making a place just come alive more is of course plants flowers whether they're artificial or real i don't do real plants or real flowers because i'm rubbish at watering them and they always die i go with artificial low maintenance and they look just as good if you ask me so i like a really big plants in really big pots that kind of go in maybe the corridor or maybe the corner of a room just to really bring some life and some greenery into a room there's nothing like greenery to really wake a room up and make it feel a bit more like something's going on flowers love i love these on tables and windowsills and i really like in fact i've got some here i've got these artificial white flowers another really obvious way of making your house feel like your home is pictures there's nothing worse than walking into a house and seeing loads of like set up furniture and you know gorgeous canvases and things like that and then you see no pictures of the people that live there it just it's like a faceless house there's nothing like memory to really make you feel like ah oh, you know this when i walk into this room i remember this or when i walk into the house i see a picture of us you know on that day where we were doing such and such so big pictures small pictures you know you can use those of sites to like blow up your favorite pictures into big canvases and put those up if you like portraits whatever it is paintings of you if you're a couple if you're a family whatever it is picture it and put it up around the house because that is what's going to help you to really relive those memories and feel like oh yeah you know whenever i go home i can sit and look around and reminisce about all the good times that i've had with my husband or boyfriend or partner or kids or whatever so pictures put them everywhere i mentioned canvases these are also really good to i guess bring a bit more art into the room you can get them so inexpensively you know with floral designs designs of architecture landscapes whatever kind of puts you in a certain kind of mind frame is a type of canvas you should go for i love flowers flower canvases so that's what i always veer towards another thing that i am becoming absolutely obsessed with are candles everywhere candles in the living room big candles small candles 
in the bedrooms. A scent, a certain smell is, and if you associate that smell with your home, it will always feel like home. So I like to put one right by the door, one in the living room, one in the bedroom, one in my filming room. When you associate a certain aroma with a certain place, you place it in your mind as, yes, my home smells like that, and my friend's home smells like that. So I think it's also a really calming and relaxing way to sort of set a mood or create an ambiance. And if, relaxing and calming is the ambience you want to create for your home then great use a candle you can also use like little diffusers if you want just the scent but you don't want the sort of like you know dim light effect whatever works for you but create an aroma in your home it doesn't always have to be the aroma of your cooking <laughs> that's always good though that there's nothing like the smell of cooking to make you feel like home although if you're the one doing the cooking doesn't really have the same effect. Another thing that really makes me feel at home somewhere is when I leave there for a long period of time, miss it and come back. There's nothing like spending time away from your home to really feel like it's your home or spending time somewhere else after you've moved into somewhere and been there for a while and then going back and being like, oh, you know, you just kind of have that sigh of relief, happy to be back home and you can kind of get comfortable and do whatever it is you want to do. And what goes hand in hand with that is also spending quality time in your house. So if you live alone, you know, roam all the rooms, chill out in the bedroom, chill out in the living room, chill out in the kitchen. Spend time in each of the rooms to really familiarise yourself with the setup. And if, if you've just moved in, it's particularly important. And just to like look around and think, hmm, where would I move that? Mm, do I like that there? Like, whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself situated, do that. And there's no better way to get situated than to just spend time in your house. To have staycations. Um, what me and my boyfriend do quite a bit is we'll book time off work and we won't go anywhere. We won't leave the country. We'll stay in the house, we'll order food in, watch movies all day, chill on the sofa all day, have duvet days. I'm not saying become antisocial and completely neglect all your friends and hibernate, but you do owe yourself that quality time to spend in your house. It's like in the same way that you spend quality time with your partner to kind of develop your relationship, you spend quality time with your house to develop your relationship. So spend quality time in your house and then when you go away and you come back, you will really appreciate it. The final thing is give it time. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's likely that you'll have moved from somewhere where you've lived for a very long period of time in some cases. So give yourself time to feel at home. Some people get situated very easily. They get in, they move all their stuff in, they buy all their things and whatever, and it's all good. But for others, it's a slower process. You buy things slower, you fill it up with furniture slower, like you spend time there gradually and then it starts to really feel like okay this is my home if you're a first time buyer and you've just moved out of your parents house in a similar situation like me and you've never lived out or maybe you've lived out for short but for shorter periods of time give yourself give yourself months years whatever like there's no set time everybody's different and we all have a different way of adjusting but it will take time potentially and it will sometimes feel like a house all the things that i've mentioned the things that you can do to kind of speed along the process and really help you to feel comfortable where you are because i think that's important but time is is the biggest factor in this all i hope this video does help somebody to get more situated in the place that they're living in or the place that they've just moved into and if that's you fantastic so yeah those are my tips. Thank you so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe and comment below if you want to see more life tips and advice type videos from me. But again, as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Um, so it is a body shop chamomile silky cleansing oil. Now, I've been looking for something less harsh than my cheapy Wilco makeup wipes that I use to take off my makeup. And I was watching a video, YouTube video, by um, Amelia Liana, and I'll link her channel below because I really like her, her reviews on beauty products and stuff. And she recommended that this was her favourite, um, she said this is, this is one of her top favourite.